and gentlefolk, I just picked my microphone. Hello, I'm Marshall. And I'm bringing you another one versus one. But before you think, oh, it's just another one versus one, I have a surprise for you. The next video is going to be a four versus four, I believe. I've just been sent one. So watch out for that. Finally, there will be one video that is not a 1v1. You have got your wish at long last. But in the meantime, here we have Dreadnought on the North Spawn in Sandy Brown going bots first. And on the South, we've got its watermelons in lovely yellow, Ukrainian yellow. Going bots into air into third bots. On the north, though, straight into air, maybe a bunch of P-Gens into bots again. So, a little bit of context for this game. I have been told that a certain melon de water, melon de agua, or however you say it in languages other than English, is new into the uber ranks. So, this is a pro game. Let's have a look at how Watermelons does. We've got Firefly coming out. Ah, having a little nosy around the north. We'll see a bot. We'll see an air factory. We'll see a couple of fabs and a whole bunch of docks. And what we will see is that there's a lot more bots planned. So this is a nice segue to City of Walkways. This is a tiddly little planet. 380 radius, 44 metal. The only real features on this map are these very shallow walls and uh, the sort of trenches and the platforms directly between the players' bases. And that's it! You've got to be careful with these walls though, because things can shoot over them. Well, I say some things can. Well, well, I say things can. Some things can, other things cannot. Of course, grenadiers can shoot over them. Commanders in some cases cannot, so you've got to be careful. Keep your commander safe, lads. Right, we've got an Icarus that looked for a couple of fab picks. Didn't get them. Commander punishes it. Nicely done there by Dreadnought. Good attempt by Melons. Bumblebee would have been slightly more effective, or indeed a little bit more patience would have been more effective. But there we go. Large Docks Force now coming down towards Melons from Dreadnought on the north. Now, on first thought, I would have thought this map would be quite vehicle-based. But initially, you need a lot of uh, bots because of the mobility. And because there's so many different avenues to your opponent. The other thing to note is because it's so small, you can do this. Commanders can go for a wander. In a recent balance patch, I say recent, the last balance patch, Commanders had their movement speed significantly increased. So you can now do crazy things like this. Look how fast he's wandering up there. It's crazy. Crazy fast. Meanwhile, docks are circling around on the south, ready to pick off a huge amount of resources. Same on the north. It's going to go both ways. One uber cannon will get rid of this lot, though, whereas there's no defensive commander on the south side. But Dread isn't pushing in! Dread is not punishing this. Melons is getting lucky. You could even say Dreadnought's been pipped <laughs> to the post. Go on, how many other melon puns can we come up with? I don't know. I don't know many other types of melon, do you? Other than melon. There we go. Slightly defensive there. Bumblebee coming in. Dreadnought now microing these docks instead of those. Sacrificing them out. Bringing the commander down having seen... Warder Malone's commander. Maybe he hasn't actually. Maybe he has, but he certainly now has. That will adjust this. He'll be thinking, uh-oh. And now he sees tanks and he'll be thinking, uh-oh. That's not good. What does Melons know? He doesn't know much about that commander, although I think he had a Firefly there a moment ago, so yes. They both know. But here, we have the booms. The booms of death. Death booms. 
Let's have a closer look. Uber, Uber, one Uber cannon. One Uber gets them all, but one. Gorgeous shot there, and we're into Commander Boxing territory. Bet you haven't seen this in a long time. They're just within spitting distance of each other, and they're just ignoring each other. It's like when you're in a classroom, and there's that person you really don't like. Might have been a bully, sat two desks away from you. And once the teacher's talking, you're both like, eh, yeah, I'll focus on the class. But until that point, where are you shooting at? Very interesting. But until that point, where you notice each other again, and then it's like cats. You just go at each other, but that's irrelevant. Grenadiers coming out for watermelons. Getting that range, and the danger here is that Dreadnought has to retreat and get away from these Grenadiers. Or that is, take them out. Beautiful micro on the docks on the south side there to take them out. Neither player really harassing the bases right now, both just focusing on that commander micro. Dreadnought did a nice job there of harassing those Grenadiers from the back. Got a couple of Pelicans. Have we got some Infernos coming out? Yes. Going to Inferno Pelican it. Maybe that's going to go into the base. I don't know. We've got another one of these coming up. A couple of tanks, though. Should be able to take it out. There we go. No PGM for you. Factory should go down if microed well enough. Inferno there. Bumblebee Dread. Don't lose that. Uh, oh, dear. Well, you've. Well. Better than nothing, I suppose. Right, what do we got up here? We've got more docks. We've got some pelters for defense. This is crazy. Very quick adapting here from both players. Very, very quick indeed. Dread taking that out and running away, regrouping his docks. No need to lose unnecessary ones. <laughs> what is this pelter creep? Unbelievable. If he can get this up, that will force watermelons to either push forward or retreat. Now, taking out these expansions is doubly effective. I'll tell you why. Having a mechs gives you vision. Not having a mechs denies it. So just have a look around the base. Oh! Never mind, we'll come back to that. Let's have a look at how much damage we can do here. Potentially, the entirety of uh, the base. Keep an eye over there. Yeah, that's it. Base is toast. Watermelon's now realising he has to push in because there's the Pelter there. Dreadnought running away. Pelter didn't last very long. That was a shame. Faber picked off by some Grens. Will Dread move back to Booms? I don't know, but he's definitely keeping up the uh, the eco game here. But as I was saying, yeah, not having mechs produces no vision. So you'll see here, pop, all of that goes. And pop. And that denies watermelons now. Any ability to see what's going on here, or potentially on this side of the wall as well that's being hugged. So having to rely on radar now. But that's going to allow the Grenadiers to do a little bit more work. The danger is overextending this commander. He has to be very careful with his uber cannons. He's going into enemy territory. He does not want to be too liberal with them. Oh! Uh-oh, here we go. Don't get too easily diverted. See a gold shiny thing. It's not always the best thing to run for. Here we go. There are booms waiting in the wings. Melons needs to be careful. Once Dread sees a lack of docks, he might push them in and YOLO. What he could do is bait out an Uber Cannon, try and take out this force, but the booms are there. In they come. They might just be going in anyway for the surround. Did significantly weaken that force, but Watermelons now pushing into Dread. Watermelons has more health. Can Dread turn this around? Dread still has 
the base and production. He still has Infernos coming out on the other side, but it's not enough. The Eva Cannons are going to finish it off with the Grenadiers. Unbelievable. Unbelievable scenes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a crazy game. I've been Marshall, and next game is a big one. Stick around.